guys, it's Lily. Thank you so much for tuning in again this week. Today I had a plant sale in Belrico, which is about 45 minutes, more like 35 minutes from St. Pete. It's a really nice event. It's from nine to one. Um, so that means that I was actually able to get home early enough to get through some plant chores and actually shoot the video today. So um, <clears throat> that being said, Today I want to go over root mealies. I hate root mealies. I hate root mealies. <laughs> um, I had to deal with root mealies for the very first time um, when I started collecting succulents and cactuses. So I had no idea what root mealies were when I first started getting into plants. And I noticed at first on a few succulents, it was a very frustrating task, especially with succulents because they're so sensitive once you um, mess with the roots. So I had a really hard time dealing with them when I first encountered them. And then the second time I encountered root mealies was with Hoyas. Um, but by that point, I already knew how to deal with them. So it wasn't so overwhelming as it was the first time. They can pretty much take over your plant collection and destroy your plant collection if you're not aware that you have them. And they're very, very easy to spread. So um, today, hopefully, I will be able to cover um, like early signs on how to detect uh, if your Hoya or your plant has root mealies, um, what to do when your plant has root mealies, and how to prevent root mealies from infecting your plant collection. So hopefully you find this video helpful. So. Since I had such a tough experience with root mealies, I've been very vigilant about root mealies and I don't ever allow any plants to join my collection without um, first checking the roots and checking the soil to make sure that there are no pests in them before I um, allow them to join the rest of my collection. I think the biggest uh, reason why root mealy infestations get so out of hand is because they spread through watering. So one of the first things that I had to deal with is the fact that I had a habit of bottom watering plants. So root mealies, because they live in the roots, when you water the plant, the root mealy and the root mealy eggs and larvae, all that literally slides through your roots, through the potting soil, through the drainage hole, into the water, and then it moves on to the next plant. So the plant that is literally next to the plant that had the infestation is now infested with root mealies. Uh, so anytime that you reuse water, or you bottom water a plant, or literally just have one plant with root mealies next to another plant with root mealies, anytime that you water that plant, the runoff water from one plant could touch the other, and that those eggs, those root mealies, could literally walk from one plant to the other and infest the other plant. So very quickly, you will encounter root mealies on all of your plants if you're not careful. So the first uh, safeguard that I have um, is obviously checking the soil, checking the roots on any uh, plants that I bring into my home. The second thing that I do is if I notice that a plant has root mealies, I isolate it. So I will take it from where it is and I will put it like either in a container um, whether where it's separated from the rest of the plants, I will treat the plant. I will not let that plant get anywhere near the rest of my plants until I know for sure that there are no root mealies in there. Um, the other thing I do is when I propagate plants, just in the rare case that there is a root mealy in one of my plants for some reason, what I'll do, here's a perfect example, is I will, <laughs> yes, I know. What I do is I put a cup or like a saucer under the plant so that the, the runoff water doesn't um, mix with any of my other plants in case there is a root mealy infestation in there. So you're creating some sort of barrier between the water that contains any root mealy eggs or root mealies and the plants next to it. So the first thing that I want to uh, show you guys is what to do, what to look for when you first bring a plant home um, to make sure that you are not um, introducing it to the rest of your collections with an infestation of root mealies. So for this exercise today, um, what I did is I borrowed a couple plants from a friend that has root, a root mealy infestation on some of his plants. Um, thankfully, uh, he's getting a pretty good handle on it, but you know, nonetheless, there are some root mealies in his collection. 
Um, and so this is one that had it pretty, pretty bad. So um, I borrowed the plant, I'm gonna treat it, and I'm gonna show you one of the ways in which I treat an infestation. Hi, Simba. <laughs> So I have three different plants that I'm going to treat today and I'm going to treat them in slightly different ways just so I can show you what to do um, in different cases. So the first Hoya, I actually don't know what this Hoya is, um, I literally have exactly zero clue, um, but this Hoya has a little bit of root mealies but the problem is not that bad. The next one is this one, which is uh, Dr. Ebok, and the infestation of root mealies is completely out of hand. I mean, you can see it everywhere you look in this cup. And then this one, which is ugh, absolutely stunning, and it's it's really sad that it has root mealies. Um, and this one is a Hoya Obscura variegated. So, I know, I know, I'm so jealous of this plant, it's so beautiful. I'm absolutely jealous of it. I really love my Obscura and I can't imagine having a variegated version of it. It's one of those Hoyas that just grows really, really fast. It blooms all the time. So I'm really jealous of this one. So I hope that I can help my friend out with um, the uh, root mealies um, and hopefully save this Hoya so he doesn't lose it from his collection because it's absolutely stunning. So, but the first one we're gonna treat is the one that has it the worst because um, I think that is, I want to say 90% of the time when I bring a plant home and I notice that it has root mealies, I immediately just, I'm going to be honest, I take off all of the roots and I start over with that cutting because I don't want to risk it. I Most of the times I find that if I try to root, uh, treat root mealies in any other way, I, I end up just delaying the fact that I'm going to have to get rid of the roots. So right off the bat, as long as I have like at least two leaves, as long as the leaves look healthy enough, I don't even risk it. I just get rid of all the roots. Um, and then I just start over as a fresh, as if it was just a cutting instead of a rooted, a rooted Hoya. So the first thing is First, I like to buy Hoyas when they're in clear pots because that way I can see the roots and it's easy to inspect the Hoya. Um, but if it's not in a clear pot, um, you could easily just take the plant out and look at the roots. Um, so the first thing that you're gonna look for is to see if you notice any small white dots around the roots or on the potting media. I know for a fact that my friend doesn't use rooting powder, which is one of the um, the causes for anyone to see like small specks of white. But if you know that this Hoya was not rooted with rooting powder, then you know that there's only two other options, root mealies or it's a fungus. Um, this does not look like a fungus because the soil is pretty dry and it's still white and it's all over and it's specifically around the roots. So I'm gonna try to show you a good example Hopefully you can see that. I mean, there's so much white, just like powdery. Oh, it's so gross. It's all around the roots. It's on literally every single root. Um, it's It like sticks to the potting media as well. So let me see if I can just take this off. Do you see that white on, on the cocoa? Hopefully you can. I mean, that is, oh God, it's moving. Oh, I know you're not gonna see this, but there's a mealy in there moving. I have the benefit of having 20-20 vision, but I realize not everyone does. So maybe you can get um, like a microscope or something like that um, so that you can actually see the pest moving. Oh, I can see it moving. Oh, they're so gross. Root mealies are like fluffy. They almost feel like cotton balls, but really disgusting, slimy, little tiny, gross, squishy, white pests. They're disgusting. They're my least favorite insect or pest to deal with. Like, I can deal with spider mites. They're a pain, but they're not disgusting to me. Mealybugs are just absolutely disgusting to me. I really just detest them. So, as I mentioned, because this Hoya has such a bad infestation, it's on literally every single root I see. And the first thing that a root mealy will do is it'll suck all the nutrients out of all of those roots to the point of drying out the roots and then it's eventually um, 
killing the Hoya. So all I'm literally gonna do is take everything off, everything that I can. And while you're doing this, make sure that you're not getting, like see what I'm doing here where there's like potting media all over this tablecloth. Directly after I finish this video, I'm going to wipe this down and I'm gonna make sure that all of this goes directly into the trash and it does not touch any of my plants because root mealies spread very, very easily. So as I clean this out and I get closer to the actual, um, oh, that's disgusting. And I get closer to the actual stem, I start to notice so many more. I mean, it's just absolutely disgusting. And the sad part is, is that it doesn't even have to take, it doesn't even take that long for the plant to get this bad. Um, so if you're not paying attention, if you don't have your Hoya in a clear pot, if the cutting wasn't inspected when you first brought it home, it's, it's gonna get out of hand pretty, pretty quickly. So maybe you can see some of it in there. So what I'm gonna do, I already took most of the potting media off and now all I have left is just the roots. So I'm literally just gonna take my hand and my, I'm lucky I have nails, um, but I'm just gonna take my nails and just cut all the roots off as close to the stem as I can possibly get them um, because I don't want any of those roots left. They're completely, oh, that's disgusting. So one of the things that I, um, I need you to watch out for is the fact that they don't lay their eggs just on the roots, so it could be on the stems as well. So you wanna like, I, what I do is I rub it with my fingers a lot, and then what I'm gonna do directly after this is I'm gonna spray it. Um, but I wanna get rid of all these obviously dead roots. I mean, they look like thin hairs. So it didn't take much for me to be able to just cut this off. Um, so this way, you're eliminating most of the root mealies that were on the potting media, and you're essentially just starting from scratch. So your chances of getting that infestation again are very slim, because the only way you'll get it is if there's some like leftover eggs on the stem, or just, I don't know, maybe a root mealie that you didn't notice. But just in case, we're gonna actually spray it. So what I used to spray the, uh, the stem with is, this so this is a three-in-one um, insecticide it works on um, it works on spider mites it works on aphids it works on mealybugs uh, what else okay a bunch of other stuff but what we really care about today is mealybugs so anytime you ever use an insecticide or a miticide or anything like that you want to make sure that the pest that you're trying to eliminate is one of the listed pests on the bottle so you want to always make sure that you read the instructions or the, um, the directions. Um, I know that this will treat the mealybugs. So what I've done is I have mixed seven tablespoons of this into a gallon of water. And then um, I filled up my spray bottle with the diluted mixture. So since, first of all, this smells really, really bad. So it's okay because I'm only spraying it like twice, but if you're spraying a whole lot of it, I would suggest doing it outside or wearing a mask because it really just does not smell good. So, and it's not good for your lungs. So, um, now that I have gotten rid of all of the all of the roots, it's all in here, I'm gonna grab my little spray bottle and I am going to, hold on, there's still some roots left over. Okay, hold on. I want to make sure I get rid of all the roots, so I'm just going to take my scissors and I'm going to cut the very end of the cutting off. And so you know the cutting is still alive because it has that um, the, the milky liquid at the end. Um, and then all I'm going to do is I'm going to spray it. Now because it's root mealies, I don't really have to spray. Oh come on, I don't really have to spray the leaves because it's just on the roots and the stem. So, but I'm going to spray. Like if there's aerial roots, you want to spray those as well, just in case. Okay, that's good, and that's a terrible spray bottle. So, um, so now 
we got rid of the root mealies and any eggs that were on the stem or any larvae or any actual root mealies should theoretically be gone by now. Um, so now we can actually take this cutting and we can um, pot it up. Now, key important fact here is do not reuse this cup, light it on fire, I don't know, I just don't reuse any anything that I ever see root mealies on. I will throw out the cup and I will not use it. Um, so I'm gonna set this aside and I'm gonna grab a new cup. Also don't use this, this also has, yeah, you can actually see the white on it. You can clean this off and reuse it later, like way later, but for right now, we don't need to risk it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pot up this cutting. I already have my mix here. And as I mentioned before, I'm gonna create some sort of barrier between the potting mix and the rest of my Hoyas. So I will put the cutting in this cup, I will fill it up with um, the potting media, and then I will put this cup under it. And that is for any time that I water the Hoya, if there was any root mealies left in here, they won't spread to the Hoya next to it or to any of my collection. So I'm just gonna put some potting media in here. I went over my potting media in a couple of my previous um, Hoya related videos, so if you want to watch that, I think it's uh, my second episode. I don't remember. I'll link it in the description if you're interested. So now this cutting is is um, potted up. I have it in a clear cup so I can keep an eye on the um, on the plant in case the root milling infestation comes back. But just in case, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna water it with systemic. So, well, hold on. So the potting media in here already has systemic granules. It's this, this. So this is one of the uh, ways to prevent an infestation from spreading. It will not get rid of an existing infestation. If your, if your Hoya is already infested with Rumilis, this is not gonna do anything to it. I mean, just being honest, it's not. The only thing this will do is prevent an infestation from occurring if a root mealy was to land on your Hoya um, and your Hoya already has this in its system. So this is granules that go into the potty media and then when you water your Hoya, this kind of like releases the, the insecticide and it is absorbed into the root. So when the root mealy tries to like bite the, the root to absorb all those nutrients, it's basically killing itself. So this will get rid of the first couple of root mealies to try to attack your Hoya, but it's not gonna get rid of an existing infestation, at least in my experience. So this is already in the potting mix, um, just as a preventative measure. It's in the potting mix for pretty much every plant I have, except for anything that's edible. So now I'm going to take this Hoya that I just potted up, that I removed the roots from, and I'm going to water it with systemic. So this is the systemic that I use. I did link everything that I use in my Amazon link, which is in the description. Um, but what I'm gonna do now is I have a pre-mixed gallon of the systemic, um, and I am going to water the Hoya. There you go, until it runs off. So once it has completely drained, you don't want it to be sitting in water, I'm gonna put it in a second little cup. Come on, there you go. So I'm gonna put it in this cup. So now any excess water that runs off of this Hoya will be captured by the bottom cup, which doesn't have any holes in it. And if there's any root mealies, they'll just be stuck in this cup. They will not move on to the next Hoya. And that's it. It's the first way and most aggressive way to treat root mealies. <laughs> Okay, so the next Hoya um, has root mealies as well, but it's not that bad. I mean, I can see them, but it's not taken, it hasn't taken over the entire pot like it had with a Dr. Ebok. Um, but I am going to try to show you. Always take it out of the pot. I mean, the, it already has root mealies, so what's the worst that's gonna happen? 
so the good thing about this one is I don't see any of them alive and moving at least not yet so don't just look on the outside because there's a lot of roots inside the potting mix so I always just get in there and try to find or try to determine how bad the infestation is before I decide what to do um, but if I'm being honest, most of the time, like 98% of the time, I'm going to just start from scratch. Get rid of all the roots. I don't want to waste my time and energy trying to treat a problem when I could just re-root the Hoya and start from scratch. So what I'm noticing here is a lot of dead roots. Um, and that just tells me that there are mealybugs in here. Oh. Yeah, I'm, I'm noticing little white spots. Um, okay, that got in my eye. Um, <laughs> I'm noticing little white spots in the potting media, um, just like we did with the Dr. Ebok, just a lot less. Um, so with this one, I'm gonna try a more delicate method. I'm going to get rid of any of the roots, like see, you see that root that just kind of looks like it's thin like a hair? That tells me that that root is completely dead. So I'm going to get rid of any roots that are dead. I'm going to just cut it off. If you're able to like pull the root and then it like just turns into hair, then that root is already dead. So you're not hurting the plant by cutting it. You're preventing it from spreading further by cutting the root off. So I'm clearing as much of the potting media as I can. And the reason I, I do that is because root mealies will lay their eggs in, in the potting mix just as much as they lay it on the actual roots themselves. So by getting rid of as much of the potting media as possible, you are increasing your chances of breaking the reproductive cycle. Um, yeah, see like all those roots are thin as hair. They're definitely not healthy, yeah, see? that's not a healthy root. So I'm gonna cut some of it, see if I can save some of that root. Looks like I can save some. But most of this is like dead already. So the reason I'm not cutting all of the roots off is because the infestation is not as bad as it was with the Dr. E box. So I can try to just save some of the roots and that way the Hoya will root faster will recover faster from the infestation um, but the main thing that you want to do is get rid of any of the areas that you can clearly see um, white spots on or spots because that's where they have laid their eggs and that's where their babies are and you just want to kill them you want to murder those you got to be aggressive so because most of these roots are pretty much dead I'm trying to just cut around um, to get rid of all those little hairy tentacles. So I'm going to keep doing this for a minute and then I'll let you go. One of the things that you want to keep in mind when you're treating a Hoya for root mealies is that by cutting the roots you're not necessarily hurting the Hoya, you're encouraging the Hoya um, to grow newer, stronger roots. Um, it's almost like waking up the roots to grow more. So I think this is pretty good. So after all that, this is all we're left with. But these look pretty healthy. Um, I tug on them and they don't turn into little hair roots. Um, there's one more. Okay, so I don't, the first thing or the next thing that I'm gonna do is visibly just check the rest of the plant to see if there's any actual mealies, like regular mealies on the Hoya itself, like on the nodes, hiding in the crevices. I don't notice anything, so I'm just going to assume this infestation is limited to just the roots. So I'm gonna take the same spray that I used earlier, the three in one, and I'm going to spray the roots.
And again, I'm also spraying the part of the stem that was in the potting mixture. So that's pretty much covered in that, um, in that mixture. So now I'm gonna put this aside and I'm gonna pop this up. Um, and I just put it into another little cup that doesn't have any drainage holes in case there are some root mealies left in there so it doesn't move on to the next soya. <sighs> this one is gonna hurt my soul <laughs> because it's such a beautiful Hoya. Um, and the, oh God, I could see it moving. Uh, maybe this is a good one for you to see the actual root mealy. hope you can see it. Oh, it's so big. absolutely disgusting so because this Hoya is so precious I don't want to mess with the roots too much especially because it's such a fancy Hoya it is not my Hoya and I don't want my friend to lose his Hoya so I don't know if you noticed but when I took out the Hoya, I didn't mess with the roots at all. I didn't touch the potting mixture. The only part of the potting mixture that came out is the one that was loose, that wasn't attached to any of the roots. So I'm not going to, um, I'm not going to mess with the roots at all. I don't wanna risk it. Again, it's a precious Hoya. It's my friend's Hoya. I don't want it to die. I wanna be extra careful with it. Um, and I'm just not willing to lose it. So what I'm going to do is I'm literally just going to look at it and if I notice any root mealies moving, I'm literally just going to try to squish it with my hands, which is absolutely disgusting, but there's one. Oh, it's disgusting. Luckily on this one, it's big enough. Um... One thing you'll notice is this is not a sustainable way to treat a root mealy infestation. You can't possibly do this to your entire collection. But if you have a special Hoya that you just really care about that you don't want, um, that you don't want to mess with, um, I just suggest taking it out. Don't mess with the roots. Take a new little cup. I'm gonna spray a little bit inside the cup but like a little bit, you don't wanna drown it. I'm gonna take my potting mixture. I'm gonna plop it in there and I don't wanna put this cup over the potting mixture just in case. I'm gonna take the potting mixture and put it in there. Oh, this is gross. But again, it's my friend's Hoya, I don't want it to die. <laughs> I just want the root mealies to die. Um, so hopefully just clearing out some of those eggs that were in the potting mixture um, will help move the infestation away from this plant. Um, there are systemic granules in my potting mixture, but it's not a lot. Um, so all I'm gonna do now is I'm going to water it. with the drench. Make sure that it drains out all the way. Because the infestation in this Hoya wasn't so bad, like it hadn't taken over all of the roots, the drench should kill any of those live mealybugs. Um, and it should also get rid of all those eggs. But because I'm not, 
without cutting off all the roots and just starting over, I'm not 100% sure that the systemic granules and the systemic um, drench by themselves are going to get rid of this infestation. So I'm going to put this in a separate spot where I can keep an eye on it. Again, it's in a clear cup. And I'm just going to keep an eye on this Hoya. I'm going to treat it like it's my baby. Um, I'm just going to keep an eye on it. And I'm just going to look for signs of new white spots around the cup. I'm going to look for any moving mealy bugs. Um, and if I start to notice that the infestation is not getting any better, then I'm just going to recommend completely rerooting the Hoya and starting over. It's better than losing the Hoya to mealy bugs. I think this Hoya will do okay. Um, I'm just not completely convinced that the systemic will be enough to kill this amount of infestation. So again, I'm going to keep an eye on it. Um, if I see that the infestation will continue to spread, I will just start over like I did with a Dr. Ebok. So at this point, I've shown you three different ways that you can treat mealybugs. I've shown you the most aggressive way, the eh way. And then the mildest, most careful way to treat a mealybug infestation. So now I want to talk to you about a Hoya that I knew had mealybugs. I wasn't 100%, but I was pretty sure it had mealybugs. So I kept it isolated when I was repotting it into this terracotta pot. I repotted it a few episodes ago, so I did show you guys this Hoya. It's my GPS 7020. Um, and I had a feeling that it had a root mealy infestation, um, but it wasn't a lot. It was only like a couple spots, and I just was not sure that it had root mealies. So I potted it up anyways, I watered it, it had systemic granules in there, and I also watered it with a systemic drench. Um, but I'm still noticing signs that there's some damage in here, um, but I'm just not 100% sure that it is root mealies. I mean, it, it probably is, but it might not be, I just don't know. Um, earlier in the video, this leaf fell. This is one of the signs that you start to notice when you have a root mealy infestation is you start to noticing yellow spots on the leaf. Um, in addition to yellow spots, this one also had dark spots, which tells me it could be some sort of fungus. Um, it could be mold. So it could also just be the cold. We've had a, a few days of cold temperatures here in St. Pete lately. So I'm just not 100% convinced it could be a mixture of many things. So. The only way to know for sure is to look at the roots. So I'm going to delicately take this out of its potting mixture. I'm going to be very careful um, not to mix this pot or this mixture with what I already know has root mealies, which is in this plate. Um, and I'm just going to gently tug it out of the pot and just let whatever wants to fall, fall out of the pot. Just let it go. This is the only way. You'll know. A lot of the times, if you have root mealies, you'll be able to see them on the walls of your pot. I'm going to put this down and I'm just going to inspect the pot. I don't see anything in there. I don't. I, I really don't see anything in there. But what I am noticing is that a lot of the roots that the plant had did fall away. So I don't know. I'm gonna keep looking at it. I see a little white spot there. I don't see any pests moving. I'm gonna clean away as much of the roots as I can without breaking them. I still don't see any root mealies. I see healthy green roots. Yep. The only sign of something that I can see is on this specific piece of cocoa but 
there's no root really there. It's just white, white powder, which could just be from the rooting hormone that I do use. I know I use rooting hormone. So at this point, I'm still convinced that it's not root mealies, but because I'm paranoid, <laughs> uh, I'm very paranoid, especially with the specific Hoya because I really, really love this Hoya. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to pot it up into a clear pot so that I can keep an eye on it for longer. Um, I'm just going to keep it inside. I'm going to put it in a prop box and I'm just going to keep an eye on it until I'm 100% sure that there's nothing wrong with it. I'm not going to cut away the roots, um, but what I am going to do is I'm going to treat it with systemic, um, systemic drench in case there are any root mealies in there. They would be drowned, but I am 80%, 80% sure there's no root mealies in here. So yeah, that's the plan. Um, now that I've looked at the roots, I feel for fairly confident that that leaf fell due to maybe transplant shock, um, or it could be just a change in temperature. Um, so... Yeah, I mean, I also see new growth here. I don't see any other signs of mealies anywhere. I'm inspecting all the nodes, all the little crevices, just in case. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna pot this up in a clear cup. I'm not gonna put it back in here. I'm just not sure. Um, I mean, the roots aren't that significant to let it fend for itself. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna pot it up in a clear cup and I'm gonna Water it with systemic and keep an eye on it for the next few weeks. And then eventually it'll go back in a ceramic pot or in a terracotta pot and it'll go back outside. Okay, so I repotted this um, in a clear cup like I usually do with most of my props. I watered it with systemic drench and I'm going to keep an eye on it in isolation for the next few weeks until I'm absolutely sure that there's no more root mealies in here uh, or there aren't any root mealies in here and I see the new growth continuing to come about and I see new roots around the cup without any signs of white spots. And I'm gonna keep it in a clear cup um, that doesn't have drainage, just in case there are root mealies in there. I don't want it to spread to another plant. Um, the most important part though of root mealies and preventing root mealies is prevention. It's literally the most important part of growing a collection of plants is prevention because once you have an infestation, it's gonna be very overwhelming. It's gonna take a lot of research, a lot of work. And if there's one um, if there's one piece of advice that you take away from today is always prevent. It's way easier than having to treat after the fact. It's a lot, of, it's a lot less headaches and you won't lose as many Hoyas or plants in general. So two things, systemic granules in your potting mixture in case one does get in there. And I want to say at least once a month or every couple of months, water your collection with some sort of systemic. I use this on my roses. I use this on my hibiscus. I use it on all my aeroids. I use it on all my plants. It will get rid of anything that is currently bothering your plant. And it's supposed to stay on the plant for about 12 months, but that's not accurate. So I do it every, every couple of months or so. Um, this is the easiest way to prevent an infestation from getting out of control. Once you do have an infestation, either start completely over from scratch or try to catch it early and treat the roots and then just keep an eye on it, isolate it so it doesn't spread and treat with some sort of spray on the roots. I've also seen people use um, a mixture of soap, alcohol, and water, like just Dawn, a little bit of Dawn soap, a little bit of rubbing alcohol, and a bunch of water, and just like soaking it in there. That could work for you if you don't have any of these other um, items in your, I feel like most plant people already have these items, um, or some variation of it, um, but definitely be as aggressive as possible. Prevent it before it even happens to you. It is bound to happen if you're actually adding plants to your collection. Eventually, one of them will get in there. And the easiest way for you to prevent a big infestation is to systematically prevent them. It's, trust me, it's a lot less money, a lot less time, a lot, a lot of less headaches, a lot 
less overwhelming than having to treat your entire collection um, for um, mealybugs and potentially losing a part of your collection to mealybugs. So with that being said, I hope you enjoyed this week's video. Remember, there's an Amazon link in the description below so that you can um, find these items that I use. Um, they're all linked in my Amazon link. Um, if you have any questions or if you're confused about something that I went over, leave it in the comments below and I'll, try, I'll do my best to answer. Um, you can also message me on Instagram. I pretty much answer right away. So yeah, hopefully you found this helpful and I'll do another video next week. Bye!